Esports is a cutthroat business. It's very difficult to make money there, even of the tier one orgs that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Maybe just a small, small few of them actually make any money but the majority of them burn all of the money but we got some news on one of the biggest organizations in esports that is optic gaming and they are signing this letter of intent to kind of do some sort of gambling business this is the article right here of them signing this loi here you can see partners on sports betting venture this is going to be something that is for esports and i guess traditional sports too it's gonna to have a bunch of stuff into in it and uh i gotta say it's not, you know, the greatest look for an esports org to do this. I like Optic. I've been a fan of Optic for almost a decade now. But when you look at business, usually in esports or any real business, the when they're desperate for money, the things you do are going to crypto or go into gambling, which we see Optic's actually done both now. So uh, it, maybe they're desperate for money. Wouldn't blame them because it's very difficult to make money in esports, but not a huge fan of the uh, taking a gambling approach to making the money. We also saw this play out with FaZe. They had a little gambling thing with CSGO uh, and it was a big controversy. They never really got held accountable for it, but that's how they made money to buy their CSGO roster. And uh, it's like not something that I think FaZe looks back on and is happy that they did. So... Hopefully that's not what turns into this for like optic, but for some of the sediment around this, it's not very good. So it opens here saying, according to investors presentation uh, by Sharper, the business idea was formed from a meeting in October between Barden and optic CEO, Hector Rodriguez optic then signed a letter of intent to pursue the partnership with next gen wagering two months later in December. So that's the starting thing. Uh, you know, I know gambling is a massive industry. It's super huge and growing. But even in traditional sports, it's not accepted in all 50 states. It's only a handful of states. There's a lot of regulation. There's a lot of things to go through to actually be able to do it. So it's not like it's some universally accepted, go ahead and gamble in the states. It's, it's pretty hard to actually get it going. And the big thing, a big problem that a lot of people have with this, and I could see it being a problem too, is this quote here saying, Next Gen Wagering will be partnering with Optic Gaming to tap into younger audiences via social content. That's probably not what you want to market this as, is tapping into the younger audience because gambling does have a little negative connotation with it. It's very addicting. You wouldn't want someone who is... 13 to start gambling and get addicted to gambling that can cause a huge amount of problems for their rest rest of their life really if they're addicted to gambling that's not a good thing to be going for so when you're optic and you have a younger audience you have a little bit more responsibility to not be pushing these things and for that to be your marketing tap where you're saying we're gonna tap into our younger audience it doesn't sound the best so i hopefully it's not predatory but i mean gambling and younger audiences it's just it's not something you really want to mix in together uh these guys break down the numbers here saying the venture aims to launch its full product within 24 months uh the company projects a, com a combination of revenue streams from wagering predictions and affiliate marketing that will generate a total of $71.3 million over five years. And then over that five-year period, the total cost of operations projected to be about $61 million, which includes optics, marketing, revenue share, personnel, and platform development and technology. So I guess breaking down just these numbers over five years, it would be projected $11 million-ish in profit. Um you know, not bad, not great. They still have the hurdles of actually getting accepted in the States. That's where your audience is, right? Optic is a US brand. They don't really have European teams. So uh, you got to get accepted there. It's already very hard to do that with traditional sports and the billionaires that would love to get this money have a tough time doing it. So I can't imagine that esports is going to have an easy time doing it. But uh, I mean, 11 million over five years. Sure. Great. Is it worth the damage that you could do to your brand though because obviously gambling has a negative connotation with it 
I don't, I don't like gambling. There's a reason there's a saying the house always wins because the house always wins. They are not going to get money to you. They are not there to make you a winner and make you a millionaire. They're there to take your money from you so that they're the millionaires. That's the whole point of casinos and gambling. The odds are stacked in their favor. So that's why gambling's so profitable. That's why stake or stake is a thing. And that's not allowed in the U S so you know, I just see a lot of barriers for this and a lot of uh, risk to the brand too. And then even the end here is a little weird saying there's several points suggesting there's a desire to have presence stateside, although it's unclear if the enterprise will consider acquiring US licenses for its sports book, which that is weird. You know, anytime you look at a company and they're saying, well, we're, we're offshore, we're in the Bahamas. You know, then you have an FTX situation as, is it a legit company? Are they managing the money correctly? Are they trying to avoid U.S. regulators? Why are they scared to register in the U.S.? Is it illegal in the U.S. for some reason? You really open your yourself up to a lot of those things if you're avoiding the U.S. And then this concludes with a pretty good point saying, with that being said, conditions in the U.S. are not ripe for an esport focused betting platform. And state-by-state -state licensing would make a domestic entry complicated and costly. Which in these numbers, I mean, they have licensings here, right? Licensing and gaming fees, gaming tax fees uh, in here. But I think it would be way pricier than $61 million over five years to actually get a sports betting book for esports in the United States when things like FanDuel and DraftKings have been struggling for years to expand states and stuff. It's not even accepted everywhere. So I think it'd be, it's going to cost way more than they think. And I don't know if it's going to make as much as they think too, from wagering and prediction. So that's the gambling part and then affiliate marketing. So I don't know how you would have, I mean, I guess other things have like affiliating marketing, like you get people to sign up, you get 10 bucks or something. Uh, but I don't know how that is going to generate profit. Usually affiliate marketing you know, cost you money because people get free, free money, but maybe they're saying the people will come, but it'll be the cost of acquisition, right? Or the customer acquisition. So I don't know. Uh, I don't like this idea. I don't like optic going into gambling. I don't like them pushing that because you do see that when a business is desperate and lots of esport businesses are desperate because venture capitalist money is drying up quickly. The last year, has been a very tough year if you needed to raise money. Obviously, people aren't just giving it away anymore. It's a lot harder to do that. So they go down these routes. And I don't think long-term that this is a good thing for the brand of Optic, right? You don't want to risk your brand that you built for 10 plus years and desperately need money for and risk it all for some gambling stuff because you could make some easy money. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I'm too jaded on gambling because I would just never go gamble. I don't like gambling. It's not worth it. It's not worth the time. It's not worth the money. It's just the reason that the house always wins. You are designed to lose in that situation over a certain period of time. So just because you, it's just not a good thing. It's just not a good thing to go do. You'd, I'd rather invest money than gamble money. But maybe I am just a psycho that would rather do that. Who knows? That could be the case. There are some people who responded to this, right? This got reported on saying, you know, talking about this stuff. And a lot of these responses here are people talking about tapping into the younger audience and having a problem with that and thinking that that's, you know, not a good way, not a good way to say it. You know, another reason to rag on optic, betting but for kids, brick by brick, you can bet your parents' house. I, a lot of people, I don't think there's any any response here. All of them are talking about, you know, tapping into the younger audience. And you can't blame them because gambling and tapping into the younger audience is probably not a saying that it should go hand in hand. You probably should not say those together and that be your entire marketing ploy. I mean, we'll see how it works out for optic. Not a fan of this move, not a fan of going down this uh, this like gambling route. Wasn't a fan when they went down the optic coin route. So, uh, you know, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to be problems. Hopefully this doesn't damage their brand beyond repair if this launches, right? This is only a letter of intent. They're not signing anything. They're not guaranteed to do something. This is just an intent to do something. They could easily back out. And if there's a ton of backlash, then they're probably just gonna back out and not wanna deal with the headache that could come with this. So that's gonna do it for this video. As always, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next.